Hey y'all, Scott here. In this video, I'm gonna show you what's in my outdoor adventure filmmaking pack and give you a little sneak peek of my next adventure. Stay tuned. I've got some exciting news today I wanted to share with you. Some of you might know Levi Allen of Left Coast Media House. He's based out of uh, British Columbia. And he's made a bunch of awesome films, Untethered, um, the Slack Life series, and all kinds of other great YouTube videos. He's decided to put together a workshop, five days on a sailboat, sailing in Desolation Sound on the coast of British Columbia. And I saw this and I was excited, but a little bit apprehensive to dive into something right as the farming season's kicking off. But I was encouraged to go for it. And so I applied and was accepted to be one of the participants. So I'm super stoked. The trip is only two weeks away. And so I thought I would collect all of my gear that I'm planning on bringing with me and give you guys a little rundown of what I've been working with. I've had a couple people ask me what gear I'm using to do my different videos and so most of the stuff that I plan to bring with me on the sailboat is the gear that I use for my outdoor life sort of uh, projects and so I thought I could put this together for y'all and you can see what I'm working with for gear, how I pack it up, and how it all fits together. So. Um, let's take a look at the table and see everything that I'm working with. So this is my basic travel setup. Uh, the center of this is the GH5. Uh, I work with the 12 to 35. It's just a nice focal range. It gives me a 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent on a full frame. Gets the job done. Everything that I need, I capture with this camera, with the exception of time lapses, which occasionally I'll use the G85, which is currently filming this right now. Um, I'll, I'll use that as my B cam for setting things up that I wanna walk away from, and then I'll use the GH5 for all the other shots in between. Uh, I also carry the 35 to 100, uh, F2.8, so pretty good for low light. Um, but this I actually end up using probably more than the 12 to 35 in a lot of situations, especially if I want something that's more um, artistic looking, I guess. Uh, this is the lens that I really like for that. And it's pretty decent for doing wildlife stuff. It's not great, but um, you can do larger wildlife with it. I always run with the Rode Video Micro. Um, simple little mic microphone. I think a lot of vloggers like this guy. It's so tiny, I can pull off the furry here. You can see it's just this tiny little shotgun mic. Fits right on top of the camera. Not the best quality audio, but for traveling, it's, it's nice and light. Fits right inside my camera bag, and I don't have to worry about an expensive mic. So this is my variable ND filter. Uh, it's an SLR Magic. I really like this guy, it gives me um, most of my needs for at least uh, film work. For photography, it's not always adequate. With this, I don't need to stop down in the daylight. I can shoot wide open and still be able to correctly expose my shots. So this guy works really well. I don't get any weird um, polarizing effects that some of the uh, variable ND filters have. So SLR Magic, this is a, is a nice one. It's worked quite well for me. For the two cameras I'm carrying, the GH5 and the G85, I bring extra batteries, so I've got four batteries for the, the GH5. I carry three batteries total. One is in the camera now, there's two here for the G85. Um, and then I've got the Numoa charger for the GH5 and then this Wasabi power for the G85. Really nice to be able to charge two batteries at one time. These just hook up with micro USB. I also use this power bank. Um, this guy can charge, I think, it's about 10 to 15 batteries worth of power, uh, just USB plugs. And you know, if you, if you need it, it has a fancy little flashlight in there too. I don't think I'd ever use that. This is heavy, but I figure it's worth it. Um, you know, if I'm in a pinch, I can charge things and it's quite handy. As always, I think most people bring a blower. Uh, I also clean my lenses with uh, Q-tips, single-use Q-tips. I find that it's the safest way to keep the lenses from getting any sort of sand or anything like that using single-use things rather than microfiber cloths. This guy, the Aperture uh, M9, it's a great little light, uh, dimmable, super small. 
it's so little it's just like why not have a little bit of light just in case you need it and this guy can be mounted on top of your camera or on a little tripod wherever um, nice little case for this and this guy charges with micro usb as well um, and so i can plug that into the power bank for charging battery charger for the gimbal it's kind of an absurdly large charger that Moza provides, but that's what we've got. Moving over into stabilization stuff. Uh, simplest form of stabilization I have um, is this little wrist strap. It's more of a, a safety measure than any sort of stabilization, but I can just easily clip this on and off the camera, um, put it on my wrist. I don't have to worry about it falling off or whatever, and I don't have to be holding onto it super tightly. When I'm doing photography work, I will sometimes attach this L bracket. You just take this screw out. This guy fits in here, you can screw it on. And this allows you to mount your, your camera in the portrait or the landscape position on a tripod. It's an Arca Swiss plate, um, works really well. It also comes with this larger base plate on the bottom. Uh, next up, uh, the gimbal. I work with the Moza Air. Um, Got the double handles for that as well. I often don't bring these, but I'm starting to use them more and finding that I really enjoy um, not having to have all that weight just on my one hand. So it's nice to work with the two. Uh, I've got a quick release plate on this so I can easily swap camera off of the gimbal, back onto the gimbal. Once it's balanced, it works quite well. Really love this guy. Use it for a lot of stuff. It, you know, not just the standard gimbal shots, but um, also for motion time lapse. And sometimes you just want to have a stable shot and you don't want to pull out your tripod. You can use the gimbal to set that up and it works quite well. The Gorilla Pod, these guys are useful for all sorts of things. Sometimes you need to set up a light. Um, useful if you're doing any sort of vlogging, holding this guy out. I need to get another ball head for this. I just use these little cheap ball heads right now, but often I am interchanging the ball head with my main tripod. This bigger tripod is ancient. You can see it's, it's missing two feet. Um, the legs don't properly extend anymore. I've had this guy for about 10 years. It's seen its day. It's time to get something new. So if you guys have any recommendations for tripods that are, that are lightweight, um, durable, uh, and, and give you a, a good amount of height on them still, I'd love to hear it. Um, this is a Photo Pro C51. It's been a great tripod, but it is time to get a new tripod because this guy doesn't work very well anymore. It, it, uh, just doesn't slide very well. That is my main setup. All of this gear fits inside my favorite bag, the Mindshift Horizon Rotation Pack. And um, I'll slide all this gear out of the way and you can see what, how awesome this bag is for doing any sort of travel. So this is the bag. Um, and the thing that's really neat about this bag is it has this uh, rotation hip belt. So this part of the bag will, will go around your waist, um, but then we've got this pack that slips out of here and holds your camera and all that sort of stuff. And so you can easily take your gear out without taking your pack off your back. Um, and so what I do is with the, this part it also comes off as a separate pack, so you can wear it as a fanny pack. So if you don't feel like carrying all your gear and you just want this, you can, you can fanny pack it, or you can even uh, sling this over your shoulder, works quite well. So my setup for holding everything is I have a lens in here, batteries, I just keep them in the bottom here. That's kind of like they're charged and ready to go. GH5 fits here. Um, you can see I've got some uh, step-up rings and a polarizing filter in there as well. The ND filter goes into this case. That slips right into here. Put this L bracket in here just in case I need it strap can kind of just go in there loosely and the microphone fits in here. I carry some extra SD cards in here as well, um, but pretty much all of the stuff that I want to have quick access to goes into this pack and it just fits. I don't think this would work if you had a bigger camera. If you're working with a, like a full DSLR, it would only work with a mirrorless camera. Inside here is this nice little magnetic holder here that snaps that in. Um, the other thing that's great about this bag is because you've you always got to carry your other stuff, right? So there's this top part that opens and it's actually quite large. So this bag here, um, this is what I keep the G85 in. So load that in here, batteries in there. That lives down here. 
Uh, the gimbal handles come apart. They slip into this nice pouch in the back. The gimbal, I have to take apart in order to do this. And so I take the batteries out. Um, also ensures that it doesn't accidentally turn on. Those also slip in the back. The gimbal slides in here. And then I can put this tripod either inside or on the outside, depending on what I'm feeling. And then there's still some room in there for some other stuff. And then, of course, as most bags do, we've got our tripod holder. Uh, this will actually snap on around the ball head when the ball head is there. Uh, the light goes on the top, as does the blower. If you need to carry the chargers with you, they can go on the top. On the side of this bag, there's also a spot for a water bottle. It's not huge, but it will fit about a one liter water bottle. So that's there. And then this pack is ready to go. There's a rain fly for this as well. That is actually really important to use. I find that this fabric is not particularly waterproof. I'm gonna try to give it um, a spray down with um, like maybe a tent waterproofing material. See if that helps um, make it a little bit more water resistant. You know, all that stuff that I need to do a shoot, I can fit in this bag. Sometimes if I need to bring lights, um, they'll go inside and the light stands can be strapped on here. There's, there's a few different configurations depending on the gear that I'm bringing. But if I'm out doing uh, short hikes or traveling a little bit, that's what I'll do. And then I'll have a secondary bag that I use for my clothes and um, any other stuff that I need. So this is like kind of like my day pack that I get all my, my gear into. I hope that was helpful for you. I've been meaning to make this video for a while and going on this trip is just an excellent reason to put it together. I'm super excited that I get to share this news with you guys and I can't wait until I get back from this trip and can start sharing some of the footage that I collect along the way. Uh, all the folks that are going to be there I'm sure will have lots of insightful stuff to share and most of all excited to learn from Levi. If you haven't checked out Levi's stuff before I'll, I'll just add a link at the end of this video. Check out his channel, he's got some amazing vlogs, great tutorials and just awesome outdoor adventure. Um, short film, so check out his work. Super awesome dude, really friendly guy. Can't wait to meet him in real life. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. It's really awesome to see the folks that are already following along. I never expected to even have this little small following grow around the work I'm putting together. So thank you all so much for, for following the adventure. Uh, but until the next video, keep getting out there, making beautiful work, exploring this world that we live on, and I'll see you soon. Peace.